So today I want to make a little video about the Sargent and Greenleaf 6120 uh, electronic safe lock. We had uh, consistent trouble opening our safe to position the handle just in a certain spot and uh, you could tell because when you heard the solenoid click it would be super faint just barely hear it and you knew it wasn't going to open but sometimes when you put the number in you had the handle just in the right spot you'd hear a loud click and it would open and it's you now the reason I'm making this video is because I, I looked for information on how this lock set works and what I could do to maybe troubleshoot it lubricate it figure you know run, replace some parts do something to get it to work myself wasn't able to find any breakdown information or uh, diagnostic information about this uh, lock other than just replacing the whole thing as you see it here. Disclaimer, I'm not a locksmith, I'm not an electronics expert, but I'm going to uh, do it anyway. So, take your pocket knife, pop this S&G logo off the bottom right here, just slip under it and pop it off. That reveals this number two Phillips screw. Pop that guy out, get your handy dandy blade, pry up gently, and then you can see various workings of the uh, of the uh, keypad, which is the battery compartment. This particular 6120 takes one 9 volt battery that goes in from the bottom right here. I'll set that aside for now. And go ahead and disconnect the ribbon cable from here. Just pull it out like that. And this is the cable from your battery. Pop that out. Now your keypad is completely free. Set that aside. Now in order to get this plastic, the housing off the outside of the safe door, there's a screw right here. Take this guy out. It appears that this little door right here is designed to come out in order to give you access to the other screw that's in here. Um, I don't, however, see a way to get it out without breaking it. So there are four number one Phillips screws all the way around the corner of this thing. so pop this plastic off now, as you can see if you can see that there's a little door and this this is loose so that is clearly meant to pop out of there but I'm just afraid it's gonna break I don't now there's another Phillips screw inside here find it right there take that screw out and then this whole plastic apparatus will come off your safe door and you can pull these cables out like so. There are two acorn nuts, locking acorn nuts, uh, 5 16 variety up here and here. Take those two acorn nuts off and you can get the keypad out of the little chrome bezel. So, so that pretty much takes care of the, the outside part. Now, when you look in your safe, you're going to see something that looks, looks like this. Um, your lock body, this part will be secured to the inside of the safe with these two screws right here on the bottom, which I've just stuck in there for demonstration purposes. Phillips, number two Phillips, take those out. So then you got these two here. Done. Here's that third screw I was mentioning. It's right here. Same thing. Number two Phillips. Pull that guy out. There's a big capacitor in here. They have their warranty void if you open this thing. Whatever. It's going to take it apart. This is just a little tiny Allen screw here. Um, I'm using a 564 bit and it's a little bit small. And this thing is all just cast pot metal. It's like zinc. You know. This this thing appears to be some sort of counterweight. I'm not I'm not 100% sure what its function is. Uh, it doesn't really seem to interact with the solenoid at all. You can see here that this is the this is the solenoid right here clearly. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and pull this off and get it out of the way. There's a, a little tiny spring that that uh, rides on here. Like see the little notch right there that this teeny tiny spring goes into on this side and then it wraps around there like that so we'll set that aside and this little paw here I have pushed the solenoid back like it would be in the unlocked position this thing has to be depressed whatever this this uh, this part right here is so you gotta depress that which is normally depressed when the covers on 
So this would be depressed, and then when you're going to push on this little paw, and that's going to push. So this little you got a got a PCB in here that's got all the quote unquote brains on it. This is where the logic is, and all this stuff just pulls straight up out of here. It's pretty simple to get out. Just pull straight up on it. And same with the solenoid and the capacitor. This has got a little ground strap on it, so we can get down in here with our number one Phillips and pull that guy out of there. Now, so in here's all that's left. Again, we've already talked about this paw and the main, what I'm going to call a bolt. Yeah, I guess it's a bolt. Anyway, and again, this is just a big old cast pot metal you know, zinc alloy of some kind body this is 3300 microfarad 16 volt capacitor this is got its, its own sub assembly and then the solenoid also you know, solenoid summit DC 4.5 volt and then the circuit board SRLV underscore V03. It's the PCB. As you can see, this thing's got a, a roll pin in it right here. This thing's in the body. That roll pin rides in, rides in that little channel. For what reason, I'm not clear. I don't know what. I'm not sure why it would hurt anything if that if that solenoid piston were just allowed to spin instead of having to be a certain orientation seems like that just is going to create potential for binding I don't know there must be a reason it's there I don't know what it would be though and then there's a channel on the other side of the, the, the cover plate right here for the long side of this roll pin this roll pins not put in straight and not put in evenly it's longer on longer on one side than the other as you can see and the short side goes down the long side faces up as you're working on the lock body like this I'm gonna put this back together put the ram back in or the bolt rather there's that and then this little paw and it's very likely that I'm gonna do some of this out of order because I'm doing it on the fly now this PCB is very clearly marked on these two um, on these two connectors. One says SOL, presumably for solenoid, CAP, CAP for capacitor. So we'll put our ground strap back on here. And there's that. So we'll put the cap back in first because there's a channel on this plastic this plastic housing for the capacitor is there is a channel for this wiring to set there's four wires the two capacitor wires and the two solenoid wires and they will sit right down in that channel to be out of the way when you put the top cover on so you gotta pull the solenoid wires out because they go in second slide the there's a notch in the body in this cast body there's a notch right here little notch right here for this for part of the plastic and then this, this little lip right here you can kind of see goes underneath this notch in the body over here so put that lip underneath like so put that one in the notch over there and there's this little tiny piece of foam set that aside for a second the Put the red and black wires in first. We'll go ahead and plug those in. Just make it easier to do. Go ahead and plug the solenoid wires in. Boom. And now push the PCB. There's notches in the die cast body right here and down here for the PCB. So there's that. And then I take our little piece of foam. I'm not sure what good this is, but at least it keeps the wire from rubbing directly on the metal housing. Alright, so there's that wires back in there now again I haven't I'm not 100% sure what the purpose of this apparatus here is um, in the spring you can see it it's really tiny it's almost 
just like a hair's diameter really tiny spring goes on the back and because honestly I didn't even see the spring on this thing when I first took it apart and it it kind of fell apart in my hands and I, I'm guessing at the way this is going back together I think this spring has to latch under the solenoid like that so that you get this sort of springing action although it doesn't seem to do anything I, I I don't know I'm probably wrong about this you know about the placement of this thing because um, it just really doesn't seem to serve any function the way it is um, yeah, see that wouldn't work because then the solenoid can't move forward so yeah pretty much it almost has to go this way yeah I don't know though I, I, that that could be wrong I would Pay particular attention when you take your cover plate off about how that spring, that teeny tiny spring in this apparatus here is oriented because because I cannot positively tell you. So now, spring inside, spring in there, drop this down in there like that. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to lubricate this channel, lubricate the other channel that that roll pin rides in with some light machine oil or something like that. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to put it back together as is. So, I'm learning as I go here, so if y'all play along with me, we'll all have fun. So I'm going to put this little Allen screw back in. I'm just going to put it in hand tight. Uh, ribbon cable back up to the back up to the PCB, like so. Hook our battery back up to the PCB and we're back in operational business so I'll go ahead and put this thing back together just